Hi, this video is intended to be a quick overview of using the Grade Viewer in Google Classroom that they kicked off in the 2018-2019 school year. I want to talk about quick ways that you can give feedback that's built within Google Docs. And we're not going to be talking about other utilities or resources, add-ons, etc. We're just going to be focusing on what's already in Google Docs. So let's get started. I created an assignment and a student already turned in the assignment and you can get to it from the stream. You can also get to it from the classwork tab. And here's the assignment. I can click on who has turned it in and I can see turned in work. I'm going to go ahead and open this. It's going to come to this fantastic grade viewer that Google built. I don't know if that's officially what they call it, but that's what I've been calling it. And what's great about it is that you are able to click on the drop down. You can pick which students, or you can also use this arrow over. And that might seem like it's no big deal, but when you used Google Classroom in the past, you had to open every document separately in separate tabs and it drove people crazy. So this was a great blessing that Google provided for teachers to make Google Classroom a much more suitable product. As soon as you jump into Google Classroom and you open up a document, it's going to put you automatically in suggestion mode. And so this means a couple of things. One, you can add text or suggest text that should be added, or you can also highlight text that should be removed and replaced. What I could do, let's say I don't want the word report. I could highlight it and then I could hit the delete button or the backspace button and it will give me the option of removing that word from there. And I could do the same thing here with general guidelines and tips. Let's say I don't want them to say and tips and I'm going to hit the backspace button and it will show that I could remove it. You can also use this to just make word suggestions. So let's say I want to change this word to specific. So if I wanted to change that word to specific, I would highlight it and just start typing specific. And you can see that it gives the option of replacing that word. If I think they need to add a word, I could type it directly in there. And you'll see that it says add special. And what's really cool about it is that any of these that are clicked on, it shows exactly what I'm talking about. And any of these green words that are clicked on, it'll go and pop out these boxes. And the person has the ability to reply directly on this suggestion. Okay, so that's suggestion mode, and that's a fantastic resource. Again, you can switch between suggestion and editing. So if you don't want to be suggesting at the moment, you can switch between the two. Um, but I'm going to keep it in suggestion mode. I think it works really well for teachers wanting to give feedback. The other option for feedback is to just give comments. So this isn't necessarily that you are going to show them and they just have to accept them. What you would do in this case is you are just leaving some information. You could ask some probing questions or you could just make suggestions without actually making the changes and having them so easily accept them. So the comment button is right up here. And when I hit this, and you'll notice that if I highlight on it, it says Control-Alt-M, at least on a Chromebook and a PC, it's Control-Alt-M. And when I hit that button, then it highlights it and it allows me to add. So I'm going to say change it to a heading and hit comment and you'll see that it's now highlighted. So comments are highlighted and they even change color as you click on the suggestions and the comments. And again, I can switch between these and see exactly which one is being talked about. Another great feature is the comment bank. At first, I didn't like this because here's what I thought it was when I would go up here on the top right hand corner and you could add comments to the bank like so. And obviously that's not that great of a comment, but for time purposes, I'm just kind of rushing through it. And so initially what I thought you'd have to do to use this comment bank is click on the three dots and then copy it to the clipboard. I saw online that a lot of people suggested, hey, you should add a comment and then hit the hashtag button. What do you know? It works really well. So instead of copying and pasting your comments in, it is really usable because what you could do is you could highlight some text like so, and you could hit the comment button, pop up with a box, and when I hit the hashtag button, what ends up happening is I get all my comments and I can pick which one I wanna use. I'll click on which one I wanna use, and hit comment, and now it's in. So, so far I've talked about adding comments, suggestions, using the comment bank. Again, you can add any comments just by hitting add comment bank. You can also edit them. You can also delete them if you don't want specific comments in there. 
And then the last one I'm going to talk about are private comments. And then we'll go to a student piece of work so that way you can see what's going on. So on private comments, this is where you could say, and these private comments are really good if you're not necessarily wanting to write directly on here, maybe it's a final piece of work, or maybe you just want to give some reminders. These private comments don't stay on the document. The private comments actually go to Google Classroom. I'm ready to return this to the student, or I could leave it as is. But right now, the student, if they were to open it, and I'll show you what I mean, they have just view only access because I didn't return it to them. So just keep that in mind that if you do not return it to them, they're not going to be able to take very many of your suggestions seriously because they're not going to be able to edit it. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit return with no grade. Then after I've refreshed, then the student has the ability to have edit access again of their document. And when they get in here, they can see any of the suggestions. It's kind of cool because the suggestions are actually in pink instead of green. And so then the student can then accept or reject. So I'll just accept that one. And then on this one, I'm going to go ahead and accept that one. And on this one, I'm going to uh, remove that one. I'll accept that one. And then you can see that there's a comment there. And I can choose to reply if I wanted to. And it's that way on the suggestions as well. And if I need to resolve an issue, if there's been a discussion and I resolve it, I can hit resolve. And it goes into up here in the comment history. And so any of these previous comments can be viewed right up here in the comment history. But you'll notice that the private comment is not there. So if the student needs to see the private comment, they will leave their document and they can see that the private comment, which the teacher did right over here, I really like your work, you deserve an A, private comments go down here in this conversation that happens directly on the assignment. And so the student, at any time that they wanna see it, would visit their assignment and they can see any private comments that are given. And the student can give one back. The teacher will receive that but they would receive it in Google Classroom. And over here in Google Classroom on the student work, you'll see that the private comment appears right here underneath the student. Down here, a conversation could take place. When the teacher returns, then over here in the assignment on the left-hand side where the teacher would do the grading, they can see any conversation of private comments that aren't happening directly on the document. That's where the teacher can then give further feedback, okay? So the teacher is then ready to give a grade. They can give a grade like so and return the item and be done. Then if I go back to my document as a teacher and I refresh, you can see that any private conversations that took place will appear here as well as over here in Google Classroom. And so those conversations sync up. You also see that after I've graded it, it will appear over here in document itself. So that's a little bit about fantastic feedback all built within Google. No need for additional tools and resources to give effective feedback to students. And I hope you found this video beneficial.